75 years ago in a little unknown Belgium town of Bastogne is where this story starts. Bastogne was to play a major role in the December 44 Ardennes offensive and out of it comes this remarkable story about a beer and a paratrooper who has become a legend. Let him introduce himself in his own words. My name is Vincent Speranza. I was a paratrooper in H Company, 501 Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division. On December 16th, 1944, the Germans launched a very violent offensive in the West. My division had to go back to combat and defend a little town in the Ardennes called Baston. After several days of very rough fights, we thought there would be a truce for Christmas Eve, but heavy German bombers were on their way to Baston. Junkers 88s dropped one-ton bombs, causing a lot of casualties among our troops and among the population. Baston was badly damaged. I will never forget that sad Christmas. So let's get on with the review and learn about the legend that is Vincent Speranza and the beer. It's beer o'clock and today we have a special review. We have got the airborne Brun beer from the Brasserie Lamborelli coming in at 7.5% ABV. Now, this review isn't just about the beer. It's about the story that the beer has come about from. So we've got to go back to December 1944 where it all started. And you've got the besieged city of Bastogne in the Ardennes in Belgium. You know, it's the Battle of the Bulge. Um, it's the German offensive, their last uh, real push, their last real battle. And on the outskirts of Bastogne, you have um, Vincent J. Speranza in a foxhole. They're low on ammunition, they're low on supplies, they're surrounded by Germans and they're fighting for their lives. And on the second day of the siege, his, uh, his mate Joe Willis gets injured and gets taken to a makeshift hospital in the centre of Bastogne, which is like a bombed out church. And at some point, um, Vincent gets told to go back into the four miles, I think they were out on the outskirts about four miles, gets, gets told to go back four miles into the centre of Bastogne and get some more batteries for, for the radio, for the platoon radio. So off he trots into Bastogne and while he's there he thinks oh, I'll check up on Joe, see where, how he is. So he, he basically um, finds him in the hospital and he, and he says to him anything I can do for you Joe and Joe says I'd murder a beer and Vincent sort of says are oh, you mad mate a beer he said we're bombed out he said we've got no supplies we've got nothing you're asking me for a beer and Joe turns around to him and says look Vincent he said there's some bars down the road I noticed them well, got brought here he said go in them and see if there's any beer and Vincent we're not going to get no beer in there and Joe's oh please just do it for me so off he trots into the first bar, it's all blown out, there's nothing, right? But he goes down the road a little bit further to the second bar. Same, but he finds there's a working beer tap. But there's no glasses, because it's, it's blown out, you know, bombed out with glasses, smashed. He thinks, what can I put in? So he thinks, ah, oh, my helmet. So he takes his helmet off. Now, bearing in mind, while he's been in the foxhole, he's been using this helmet as a toilet. So he fills his, his helmet up with beer, takes it back into the, into the field hospital, gives it to Joe, oh brilliant Joe, oh fantastic. Of course there's, there's other people there, other wounded now, saying, oh I'd like a beer, I'd like a beer. So he starts handing this beer around. Don't last long, he goes back and gets some more. 
does it again. On his way back, there's a major standing at the door of the hospital. He says to Vincent, what the hell do you think you're doing, mate? He said, I'll bring some beer to him for the wounded. You know, so I got a bit of, you know, I wanted a beer. He's gone, are you bloody mad? He said, that could kill him. I've a good mind to have you shot. He said, get that helmet back on and get back to where you're meant to be. So, and that's what happens. And that's to sort of cut a long story short and, and then go forward in time. Vincent um, doesn't go back to Bastogne until 2009. He visits with his daughter and they get taken out by some Belgian guides out to the foxholes and actually find the particular foxhole that uh, Vincent was holed up in. Um, it all gets a little bit too much for Vincent and he says, I'll oh, just go back into town. He said, I'll buy us all dinner. So they go back into town and uh, in a restaurant and uh, the, the, the food is there and the wine's flowing and um, they start telling stories and that sort of thing. And one of the guides who he's with, he says, oh, we've got a story to tell you, he said. He said, we've actually got a special beer in, uh, in Bastogne about, um, about a, a GI who filled his helmet up with beer and took it to the wounded. And Vincent starts laughing. And the guide says, what are you all about? And he said, that's me. And, he, and they went, no, no, that's all, it's a myth, we're just, a myth that's just gone around and we just told this story to Taurus. Vincent says, it's not a myth, he said, that's me. And they bring the bottle of beer over, the, 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 the guy says, bring some beers over, so they bring some of this beer over, and Vincent straight away goes, yeah, that's me, look, on there, here it is, look, there's me, out the helmet, there's me taking the beer. And suddenly the Belgians can't believe it, it's, you know, they thought this was a legend, a myth, and suddenly they're confronted by the actual person who, who actually did this. And the, the funny thing is about the story is, if you're in Bastogne and order this beer, the glass you actually um, is poured into and served in is this. It's a ceramic helmet. Um, so, yeah, it's quite fantastic. And believe it or not, it's, a, it's like 75 years ago, um, it's the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Bastogne. And I gather that Vincent's been over there um, last week, over there, and he's 93 years of age. And ever since his 2009 visit, from what I can gather, he visits every year. And yeah, he's, uh, he's like a VIP over in Bastogne now. Because, you know, the Belgians have made a lot of money off the back of this beer, <laughs> you know, in his absence. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a fantastic story. And before I open a beer, I think we all need to take a hat off to people like your Vincents in this world who fought in World War II, uh, made sacrifices um, for us to have our freedom today. Basically, you know, that's what it all boils down to. Um, so I'd like to take my hat off to you Vincent and it would be a pleasure if anyone watching this could, could show Vincent uh, the review. Um, I know they did, I did the blonde one, um, there's also a blonde beer, I did that one a review and uh, one of his relatives actually uh, um, got in touch with me and said and thanked me for the review and said they'd shown it to Vincent and he'd watched it so it would be, I'd be really appreciated if it could happen again. Um, and I'd like to take my hat off to you, Vincent, um, for what you did. And, yeah, um, let's crack the beer open and get on with the review. Now, I'm going to review it in a normal glass. Actually, it's, it's, a, it's an airborne glass as well. Um, because I can't really review it in there. You're not going to be able to see what the beer looks like. So, let's get this open. Let's get it into the glass. There we go. So, as you can see, it's a lovely brown colour. Um, it's a slight readiness, actually. I don't know if you can see that. It's a reddish brown. It's 
got a beautiful two finger white frothy hemp. Let's get the aroma. Oh, it's fruity. And there's some malts there. It really, it really smells refreshing to be honest. Typical sort of dried fruits, malt bread type smell to it. Let's dive in and give it a try. Um, cheers to um, Vincent. Let's dive in. dried fruits, um, your raisins, sultanas, dates, really really prominent in this beer. There's that typical coriander licorice notes it's what you sort of expect really from from a Belgium uh, brown it could be classed as a double to be honest um, I know on the bottle or anything it, it, they just literally call it a, a, a brown beer but it does sort of lean towards being a double um, obviously because the ABV 7.5% and it's got the characteristics I'm actually picking up a, a few sort of coffee notes to it believe it or not there's a real sort of zinginess to it as well um, which takes away the sweetness and gives it a little bit extra um, so it's sort of yeah it's, it's like a lemony zinginess yeah a very very good bit and the funny thing is is this is possibly nearer to the type of beer that perhaps Vincent was filling his helmet up with rather than the the, the, the blonde they do, the blonde one because um, they did the two, they do the blonde and they do the brown and I would say obviously that time in Belgium there was more sort of darker beers so this is more sort of probably true to the actual you know, true likeness of the beer that probably Vincent was filling his helmet up with It's a good beer. Now, I've been to Bastogne and I've actually visited the, the Brasserie Lamborel. It's a fantastic little boozer. Um, it's just round the back of the square. Um, you know, a lot of people think that, that this, this boozer's actually in the square at Bastogne. It's not. It's just, it's just tucked round the back. Um, they have a fantastic beer list. They do some fantastic food um, in there. Um, really is a, a nice little sort of homely sort of uh, boozer um, I say they produce these two beers and they're both fantastic I'm really really impressed with this um, it's a place where I think if you, you've got to go and check out you've got to go to Bastogne there's you know there's lots to do there even though it's a small town they've got quite a few museums there and uh, and that to do with the war um, really really good um, and the Belgian people there are lovely, uh, you know, if it wasn't for, I think it's one of these places, if it wasn't for what happened in 1944, um, it, 
it thrives off it, if you know what I mean. The, the, the town thrives off it. And the importance of this town, believe it or not, is because it was a major crossroads. You know, you you go to Bastogne now and it's still there's traffic everywhere. It's like a, it's a major hub of uh, of crossroads. And <coughs> that's why it was important to the Germans to capture this place. And as I say, the, uh, the Americans, like, they fought for their lives there. Um, literally uh, dug themselves in and fought, fought like mad. And I didn't realise this, but uh, I don't know where, where, he, where he got it here, but, but Vincent's actually got a, um, a purple heart and uh, I think a medal of honour. And that sort of thing. So he was a bit of a character, you know. He was a, he was a private, a private in the uh, the uh, the um, hundred and first, which was well, the five hundred and first. But he was in H Company, the hundred and first, which is obviously quite a famous uh, American regiment, as you all know. And he 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 sort of uh, arrived there because off the back of Market Garden, where they'd lost troops at Market Garden, and uh, Vincent was a replacement. He was basically a replacement for the troops that were lost at Market Garden. And then, of course, ended up, bang, Bastogne, um, which is like a bit of a horrendous siege. You know, if you've ever been there and sort of seen the area and been to some of the museums, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but no, I think... I think this beer is is fitting uh, of of uh, Vincent. I think it's you know um, it's a beer that justifies the legend. Um, I'm gonna put a couple of pictures up of uh, Vincent, and also I'm gonna put a link um, to a, a YouTube uh, video where he he tells the story. So that'll go up there somewhere as well. You'll see a link. Um, to uh, Vincent telling the story in his own words and that was Vincent's own words at the beginning I found a little clip um, so he could sort of introduce himself at the beginning um, so it's 75 years since the Battle of Bastogne um, I say Vincent is now 93 he's still alive um, still if you see his pictures of him and that, he still looks sprightly, still, so you know, and uh, yeah, it's good. And yeah, uh, this is my tribute to you, Vincent, and my tribute to all of you Americans um, who served, you know, especially in fought in Bastogne and the Battle of the Bulge and the other various battles. It's my tribute to the relatives. If any of you relatives are watching, uh, please look, leave, leave us a comment, you know. Um, it'd be a pleasure. Any, um, any of Vincent, Vincent, if you want to leave a comment, be a pleasure. Any of your family want to leave a comment, be a pleasure. Um, it's been a pleasure doing this. I, I love the story behind this beer. It's fantastic. You know, you can't beat like there's beers out there, and some of them have these stories attached to them. And I just, I'm just a sucker for it. I love the story behind a beer. Um, if it's got one, you know, it's fantastic. So. Look, if you visit Bastogne, please do it. Put it on your bucket list. Put it on your bucket list to visit the Brasserie Lamborel and have a glass of this beer. You won't be disappointed. Leave a comment below. Um, give us a big thumbs up if you like the review. Hit the little bell, get notified every time I bring out a new one. And obviously subscribe to the channel because that was you subscribers, the channel's nothing. And like I always say, Beer is the answer, but I cannot remember the question. Thank you for watching. Good night. <coughs> TT says, never play with matches, fireworks, and always drink responsibly.